Welcome. Oh, welcome, 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 welcome to Ember Skies. It's the future of 3D networking. Um, and yes, today we've got some new colours. I've decided to uh, try this uh, as an experiment. It's a brand new colour scheme that I've never used before called blue. <laughs> okay, so yeah, right. Yes, Blades. Yes. <laughs> Have you gone mental? Yeah, I just colour theme blue. Okay. I just wanted to see whether this was easier for me or not, or whether it was clearer, and if it's clearer for you as well. Um, there we go. You never know. Dark colours aren't always the best colours to use, especially on videos, or if you're trying to teach or whatever, or you're just showing people things. <clears throat> um, back out from the hospital yesterday, lovely, ah, good times, good times, so we're all back, and uh, we're here, we're doing um, um, a, a stream, yes, we're doing a stream, what, what, what were we streaming about, um, movement component, <gasps> movement component, should I do this today, or should I do that other thing, um, I wouldn't mind doing the other thing. Um, movement component is not critical at this moment. I'm thinking more about setting the scene. We don't seem to have one. <laughs> mm. So I've got two things on my mind, and one of the ones is what we're going to do. This is where we left off. Um, oof. Last Friday. Yes. That was a long time ago. Ouch. Um, no, we'll do it. We'll switch this music off. Okay, we can get rid of you now, music. Thank you. You, you were fantastic music. Thank you. Uh, you may now sit there and have a cup of tea. So I'm just going to pop this in, I think. Um, right. <coughs> movement component. Why on earth am I writing a movement component? Oh, okay. Let's bring up something else here. Now, in Qt Creator, I've uh, asked it for Qt 3D in the search here. So if you type in here, Qt 3D, under the, the help button in Qt Creator, and click on search, you'll come up with all of this stuff. Um, try and get past the QML, like this one here. This one isn't QML, it's Qt 3D. Go right up to the top, you'll find this overview for Qt 3D. Getting started. Um, there we go, blah, 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 ah, la, 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 la. license of authorizations, oh, that's nice, yeah, okay, that's very nice, uh, overview, references, no, I think this is just going through some kind of rubbish here, <coughs> um, just trying to think, this is QT513, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, frame graphs. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely. Yeah. Hmm. Very nice. Well, there's loads of information in here on three di three dimensional functionality. Um, the kind of classes that you want to build and everything like that. It also goes on um, interestingly to include ECS which is your entity I wonder if he's got it here, ECS Oh! Acheron! Oh yeah! Shout out, mate. 
uh, it just brings us here, yeah, to this overview. So it comes down to the Qt 3D architecture, and it goes through quite. That's the screen I was on, and using an ECS. Um, it's a simulated object and it, it goes through all the information now on what an ECS is. So you have an entity, you have a bunch of components, you can choose any one of these components uh, or multiple components to place in your entity and whatever your render is doing it will operate on those, whatever your audio is doing it will operate on those, whatever your physics is doing it will operate on those, etc, etc, etc. So this is a good introduction. Um, Qt Creator can be downloaded uh, for any platform. It's also possibly what I wanted to. If this is actually what I wanted to use uh, for doing this three um, D experiment in, because everything that I'm doing at the moment is massive three D experiment. It's a bit of a massive sandbox, really. Um, so that's what an entity component system is and what it looks like. So we have an entity. Uh, I'm going to close that. We have an entity in our sandbox currently. Uh, I hope. <laughs> he says, did we take the entities out? No, we didn't. Good. So we have an entity here. And our entity currently, I believe, is moving itself. Yeah. It's doing... Oh, wow. <laughs> A stream dealing with networked ECS in C++. Uh, well, all the networking stuff we've completed. Um, I'm now building up a 3D system, as it were. So as you can see here, we're doing all our movement here. Now, in 3D, there are two types of objects, really. There's one that moves and one that doesn't move. Our avatar is really a camera. Um, it can be assigned a model. If you want to have a third-person view, you can assign it a model. I don't know if we're giving it that capability at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've done much with it at all, actually, looking at that. Depends where it comes from and everything. So, our avatar, instead of doing its own movement, what we can do is we can take all the movement out of our entity, which is our avatar, and we can put it into a movement component. We can then use this movement component in conjunction with other components to create a fuller dynamic avatar um, because we are going to encounter physics and things like that so we are going to have physics components animation components are you going to have to visit a lot of components the beauty of this system isn't that you get um, an easy way of programming. Um, the beauty of this system is that you get compartmental programming. So if you have uh, an NPC that moves, you may give it a movement component. This is actually a bad name for it because this should be an input component for movement not a movement component. A movement component is the one that can move anything. But we're going to call this a movement component because we're going to use this to move anything. People say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, what happens if you jump into a helicopter in your game? Yeah. So you're running around your game, shooting people, and you jump into a helicopter. What happens to your inputs? What happens to your movement? It's now completely different to what it was one microsecond earlier. So your movement component needs to be able to recognize something like that and dish out the movement um, correctly. 
So there's a lot of thinking can go into these, and they can get quite large. Uh, a component can be quite big. It can dish it, dish out into subcomponents. Uh, a component may be made up of subcomponents, and this is what is not really understood about ECS. ECS is not just an entity having a number of components. ECS is about an entity having um, or many entities being able to share the same component. That's the trick. If your NPCs can share the same movement component as your avatar, then all of a sudden this becomes a lot more useful. And that is a biggie. I'm sorry. Ah, Acheron. Uh, honestly, with what I want to get into in the future, I wonder if getting into engine design would be useful. Um, Acheron, what, what, what would you like to get into in the future? Well, I'm just going to ask you an honest question. You don't have to be specific if it's um, private work that you're doing is for yourself. <laughs> It's alright, there's a delay on what he hears, she hears, can never really tell. Uh, so, let's have a look at this. I need to drop this micro microphone upwards slightly, or my body down a little bit slightly in this chair. Oh, there we go. Okay, get full dynamic range on the uh, old microphone. Excellent. There we go. Now, I'm going to try and design a movement component, um, a generic one, for moving our avatar. Hmm. Let's have a look at the kind of things we want. So, float. So any, if anybody uh, wants to comment on the colour scheme, Visual Studio today. Please do. You'll notice that all my previous ones have been in dark mode. I just want to know if this is clearer. Uh, I'm going to have an M. First thing I want to do is have some kind of max velocity. Now notice the wording. Not maximum speed. Speed has no direction. Velocity has a direction. So be careful with that. Uh, float. Because velocity has a direction, we can assign it um, a directional acceleration. So whichever direction you're going in, we can accelerate you in that direction. Or we can accelerate you in a different direction to make you move in a different direction. <coughs> Akron's reply, here we go. My main goal is more of a principle. Um, I want to create larger in-depth games with modular systems that allow for more immersive gameplay. I agree with that. I want to influence industry to have more unique titles again. Oh, wow, somebody after my own heart here. Get out of cookie cutters. Are we now ha what are we have now? Uh, yes, absolutely. I don't think your aims are 10 to 20 years down the line. I think you should be working for five years down the line. Uh, main goals are MMO sandboxes and that kind of thing. Well, that's good because an MMO com sandbox is what I'm talking about. So... If you go back to uh, <laughs> one, <laughs> episode one of this, and watch all the way through, God, how many hours will there be? This is 40, isn't it? So there's about 100 hours of Game Club. Um, yeah, if you started a project like that now, by yourself, 10 to 20 years is a reasonable estimate on how long it would take you to get a project into some kind of reasonable state. Uh, using an MMO sandbox as an example, absolutely, completely agree. I mean, I'm I started this. Oh God, I don't know. Uh, let's find out. I mean, where are we now? This is Amber Skies on YouTube. Um, 
obviously. Uh, we are in the game club, aren't we? So playlists, uh, created lists. Yeah, it's got created. Make sure it says created, by the way, created playlists. Otherwise, you won't see them all. Um, YouTube is a bit weird like that. I mean, we're on 40, so we're looking for a, a largish one, aren't we? Where are we? Ah, thinking club, yeah. That was my previous one to this. There we go. That's the third one in. Okie dokies, let's have a look at Game Club 1. Okay. Uh, June the 24th, we started. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> if you want to see any previous ones, there's, there's tons of information there, and there's also a lot more information, uh, obviously on the website on how to do things in different languages sometimes um, like QT and stuff like that uh, I'll let you delve into that yourselves uh, get rid of that so uh, if we can have an acceleration uh, sorry I'm going back into I'm splicing my mind again my apologies I need to finish answering the question <laughs> Um. So what you want to do with anything that you see here is um, use it in your own way. Everything's free. Um, everything that you see is free. Um, all the code you can use as you want, how you want. That's the contract. Uh, I want nothing in return. There we go. Now, a movement component. We've got a max velocity and an acceleration. Well, that'll speed us up, so it's obvious that we're going to need another float already. Then we're going to call it deceler, deceleration. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll have one of those, and we need coffee now because we need to th th think, think. Um, I'm using SFML in the background on this. Hmm. Right, so we need some form of location for the avatar. Something like that. So we're going to need something of the avatar to link into, or the entity to link into. Uh, if it was two-dimensional, it would be the sprite. Um, in this, it's not quite so simple. Um, so let's have a look at our avatar. It comes from base entity. Now, base entity is back in here. Um, did I put it in rendering? Yes, I did. So we have a movement speed, a model idea, ah, a position. That's, I think that's the key. We're going to need a key for all of this. And I think it's going to come from our base entity's position. This should work. So here... What am I going to call it? Hmm. It's just going to be a vector 3, isn't it? Okay, we can have one of those. Uh, we're in amber, so I can just use vec3. There we go. Vec3, uh, we'll call it um, position, I suppose. No, we won't. Um, it's entity position. 
be more specific with this one, please. You'll notice I always try and choose um, a value that means something. Uh, the more precise the meaning, the better. We are also going to need to know its current velocity. Mm. Is that going to be a float? No, it isn't. <laughs> this is now going awkward in my mind. You see, velocity, again, is not speed and has direction. So I think I'm going to have a vec3 for velocity as well. M underscore entity velocity. Yes. I think I'll have one of those. Hmm. Am I going to make any of these addresses? Pointers. Not really much need. All right. OK. Let's see what I can do with that. So let's go public. Let's see what we can do with that. I'm not sure because I've never written this before, so this is interesting. Um, movement component, uh, we better... Why is that underlined in the squigglies? Wow. Because we haven't got a class. Because I'm an idiot. Uh, class. Helps if we actually start a class, doesn't it? Just jumped ahead of myself a little bit there. So I'm going to call it movement. No movement com component there we go I'm right so we'll have a class and we better pull the other bit in as well haven't we thank you All right everything's shifted over nicely thank you very much uh, Microsoft for that and uh, yeah let's have a movement component Now, because it's a component and it's not um, a functional giver, it's more of a functional controller. It's more of a control kind of thing. Components are more like controllers. Um, that's another way of thinking of them, I suppose. Hmm, interesting. I'm just going to open that for a second and press return and lots of think. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take in uh, a VEC 3 um, entity position. You can, everybody can see where this is going already. <laughs> I am going to take in the actual entity velocity doesn't isn't needed when we create there won't be one. Okay, so we don't need the entity's velocity initially, and this is a constructor that we're doing. So all we need to know is the other stuff, float, uh, max velocity, that should be easier, actually. I think that should go back up to the top. Hmm. I like to keep these in the same order. Sorry. But that's just the way I am. Right, I will keep this in the same order. I want to split these up for my own mind. You don't have to. You can put them in any order you want. But I do have a rule of thumb that I will initialize these variables in the same order that I have them in the header. I always have that rule when I come over here uh, to do them. 
So it's a personal rule, it's not one that you have to follow. And if you cause any problems because of it, then obviously I think Visual Studio will tell you. Which is something else I wanted to do today because it was funny. But that's going to happen now by the looks of it, either Friday or next week. I wanted to show you a problem. Float. Uh, let's get on with it. Deceleration. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you can choose quite a few different ways of doing this. Um, oh, put a semicolon on there. So it, it's really up to you um, how you want to do it. I'm going to choose a virtual destructor because I don't know if I'm going to be using it at all. And that's just movement, component, blah de blah, semicolon. Okay. Let's do that one. We're going to need a move, obviously. Some kind of movement. Um, let's choose for our movement. Um, to scroll it up towards the middle of the page so you can see what I'm doing. How's about that? Um, yeah, a Acre on the only thing I can really suggest you do is, is go and have a look at Amber Skies uh, on YouTube for all my past stuff. Pick and choose out of that book, keep joining us. I am doing these on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for this. Uh, game club as it is i'm quite happy to do help you with any code that you are writing at the moment or think you might want to write um it's not about me making a an mmo it's about 3d in general uh, not necessarily about c plus plus either i'm quite happy to use any other language you want um I'm, I, just ask questions and if i can sit down and write code uh, then I will. Somebody's already asked a question, so on Thursday, tomorrow, we're getting a bonus video at 2 p.m. Brit time, um, where you see me do my real job. <laughs> and we will be looking at how I, how I am a research and developer. So what do I want in here for movement? Uh, we'll need a const, float, hmm, direction x. How's about that? Uh, yeah, we're in 3D, aren't we? I bet it is 3D. Direction X, comma. Oh, const, float, direction. Guess what? I'm actually going to... This is the first time I'm ever going to put this direction in. Oh, Y, eek. Comma. Const. Um, float, uh, direction, notice I split them all down, direction Z, there's three dimensions you can move in, or have, or be able to move in, so I've got to really include all of them I suppose. And also of course, as ever in this series, I use const, float, uh, and delta time. I'm not sure that's going to be useful for this one, but we'll keep it in mind. It's how I separate off the frame rate from our movement rate. I use time for movement instead of frame rate. I think that's only fair. Um, let's have hmm, an update. Uh, I don't think we're going to need much for update, are we? Uh, in case, we'll put in a const float uh, and delta time. Oops. I know, I know, I keep typing it in, but yeah. It keeps me in check. Make sure that I keep thinking about time rather than frame rate. And we didn't include something, did we? So we know all of these, we don't need, we don't know that. That is something that this can calculate. So I'll, I'll have a, a, wow, a getter? Me? Okay, this is actually the second time I think I've ever done this in the whole program. I'm going to use a getter. <laughs> 
Oh, you beaut. I'm going to have a const uh, vec3. Uh, and, yeah, I'm going to just do an address. And it's going to be get velocity because that's that is actually quite useful to have. Um, and it's going to be a const open brackets return uh, m underscore velocity. Has it come up with it? Mm, I'm having slight difficult seeing that. Have I spelt it right? Oh yes, entity velocity. It's right, I'm wrong. There we go. Hmm. No, I think I'll keep it like that. I don't really want to say get entity velocity, do I? Hmm. Let's get rid of some typing typos. Um, yeah, so there's mm, that's just a a getter, so that we can get hold of that. Normally, I wouldn't. I'd just put that into the public domain. But considering we've used so few of them, I thought I'd put it in. <laughs> Alrighty, let's uh, start setting these up, shall we? Uh, movement component. Uh, there's a little thingy here. Create definition. There we go. I'll just close that. Because I've got it on the left-hand side. Um, I'm just going to move these down. So I can see them. I write down, not across. So, there we go. What I should do is put a colon on there and then do another return like that. Now, what have we got? A constructor. So, m underscore entity uh, position open brackets equals entity Position, comma, m underscore. Let's move this back into the middle. Sorry. There we go. Show you the whole of it. Enti no, not entity. M underscore, what's next? Max velocity. Hmm. Thank you. And that equals max velocity, of course. Comma. Next one, acceleration. And that's just going to equal acceleration. Nothing funny going on here. Everything is standard C++. This is how you make a generic um, function class. Class. Class called movement component in this case. So this is how you just do it. It's simple stuff. As long as you keep it simple, you can't go far wrong. Until you see the next one that I do. And then I keep it simple and I do go wrong. Uh, we still got uh, velocity to do. Oh. My September account is ready for GoDaddy. Wow, there you go. And m underscore entity velocity is the one that we haven't asked for. So that equals a vec3 0.0f comma 0.0f comma 0.0f. Now if you're wondering where I'm getting vec3 from, uh, if you want to use glm, you can use glm. If you want to write your own math library like I have, then I just called it VEC3 in my maths library, that's all. And that's that done. Um, hmm. I'm just going to put empty there for a minute, because I haven't decided what I want to do. 
So that's your constructor, your basic constructor for what I've written on the right hand side. So let's start filling in the next. Just press return. And yep, we get a little highlighter symbol for this. There we go. Um, I don't have any pointers at the moment. So again, I'll just put empty because that's what it is. It's there if we need it. Get rid of that one, thank you. Uh, then we've got move. And create. So move, that's an interesting one. Um, I'm not going to put empty in there because I've, I've got to really put something in there, I think. And update, I think we might have to put something in here as well. So I won't say empty to this one. All right, there we go. So everything's set up. Uh, nothing else needed. I don't need to put in get velocity. It's already done. Um, I think that's roughly about it. Let's start. Oh, I can't see these either. So if you can't see something, write down. Always go down. Can't really see this one either. But I'll just pop it down here. <coughs> if you've never seen stuff written this way, don't worry. It's still C++. It's just that I use I, I write it in downwards rather than across, so I can see it on both sides. And on this side, I should have put a return there. Like that and tabbed it in, really. That's how that should have looked. I don't know, forgot that, haven't I? That's right. Yeah, that's better now, I can see it properly. Expected a semicolon? Yes, you did. There we go. Well, that's what happens if you put a semicolon there. Fantastic, thank you for altering everything. There we go, that's how I want it to look. Thank you, Visual Studio, for altering. Here's our ship's cat. Hello, Muppet. <laughs> Wonderful. <coughs> Movement component. Come on then, come sit on me, I suppose, thank you. That's a little painful right now, Muppet, but thank you. As usual, I'm backwards, so I think what we'll do is probably... Um, hmm. No. Yeah. All right, um, just thinking of how to do this. Update first. Is that going to be the easiest? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, let's do the update. I think that's the easiest one. So what do we want to do every, well, tick, every delta time? We want to update the movement. So the movement um, has two parts to it in for each update. Um, there is going to be a deceleration, an automatic deceleration. In other words, once you stop pressing the button to go forwards, you decelerate to a full stop. But you don't want to just decelerate smack bang into a wall full stop you want to be able to slow down to a stop when you're running very fast you do not suddenly stop unless you want to go flat on your face and skid along the floor let's do that in here in our update let's let's be more realistic about it at this point in time i've asked for a deceleration 
and we do know what that deceleration is. And I'm an idiot. Have I put M's in front of it? Yes, I have. Good. So we know what it is. Let's use it. And how you would use in the update. So let's have. deceleration and also I'll have a final move yeah we'll have that in here as well all right let's see what we can do for deceleration shall we so m underscore velocity no entity entity position no I want velocity and this is going to be dot x equals hmm that's awkward <laughs> d cell this is what we want to write d cell rate velocity And that is going to take in the same variable. Return m underscore entity velocity. So that's what we want to write. Semicolon. That's the instruction. Oh, we've got a problem. <coughs> OK. Uh, let's go back to the right hand side and solve our problem, shall we? We want uh, private. So this is a helper function uh, as I'm using it within here. I'm going to call it decelerate. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I think I have. If I haven't spelt it right, just say it's okay. Um, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Probably have. So I want an equals, and that is a vec3. So vec3, vec3, and it's decelerate. Let's make it the same. decelerate velocity and then it's going to be a vec3 and we'll call it velocity I suppose okay that should come up with green squigglies it does and we'll pop it at the end here and there we go And as ever, I do something like that to remind me. Otherwise, yeah, I'm stupid enough not to know. That should now stop doing that. What's wrong with it? That's a float. And that means this should be a float as well. Sorry, my bad. We are only taking one part. So it's dot x. There we go. Turn it into a float, 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 float. And everything should be a lot happier. You need to return a float. There we go. Right, so that now works. We haven't written it, but it now works. Good. We can now do exactly the same three times. One, two, three. So that becomes a Y. A Y, A Z, 
and a Z. So we do that three times, once for each part of the velocity, and that gives us an easier time of things. Why is float not working now? Type name is not allowed. Oh, okay. I don't understand what it's on about, but yes, I, know, I understand, but yeah, right, okay, we'll just get rid of that then. Just, just, just go away. God. Because <laughs> now we need to do a deceleration, which I can't see. There we go, now I can see it. Uh, let's do a deceleration. This is always fun. There are two directions in X, Y, and Z that you can be going at any one time. You can be going in the plus direction or in the negative direction. Plus Y is up, negative Y is straight down. Plus Y is, sorry, plus Z is south, negative Z is north. Plus X is east and minus X is west. Those are the directions you can choose uh, to, that these values could encompass. And they can be of any number within those directions. Literally, any number, any floating point number. So what we have to do is we have to have a two tester because they could be going either way. So we have to have an if velocity. is greater than, and that is 0, 0.0. Now, if anybody saw last Saturday's stream, oh my god, I had a lot of fun with um, floating point. Worth watching just for that. Uh, let's set this up. So if it's greater than, we want to decelerate in the negative. So that's easy. Velocity. And that is going to be minus equals, or velocity equals velocity minus, and it's m underscore deceleration. Very simple, but there's a catch. What happens if we decelerate into the negative? What will happen is, if this line in the middle here is a negative, and this is plus, 1, and this is minus 1 over here, and you decide to decelerate by 2, 1 will go to minus 1, will go to plus 1, to go, and you will start having a jutter effect, where your entity will try to be in two places at once. That is no good to us, absolutely no good whatsoever, so we'll put that check in as well whilst we're here. If uh, velocity is now less than or equal to 0, 0.0 f. I know I've put the equal sign in and it's redundant. I'm doing that because, well, we can. Uh, can I use a space here? Yeah, I think I can. Might be able to fit it all in. So, velocity. We just set equal to zero. So we stop that bouncing effect at the at the boundary of zero. We have a bounce effect. We'll, we'll stop that. We'll just let it go to there and it'll automatically go into the zero. If you notice, zero just drops through the if statement. So it doesn't actually trigger on a zero. Neat. And with a problem that we have with floating point, that is a very good idea. You'd setting zero is very important. If you'd seen last Saturday's video, then you'd know why. Uh, so else if, we'll have another one. Um, velocity is less than a zneuter point naught f. And we're really just going to do the reverse. Nothing strange there, is it? So all we do 
exactly the same, same two lines. paste but now we alter everything that's now plus equals and that's now greater than <laughs> lovely that will work otherwise it's passed through oh, didn't need it there uh, otherwise it's a pass through and you just return velocity. I mean, you do anyway, so you have to return the velocity. There we go, deceleration sorted. And we've done it properly. The reason why I do it as a function, and I don't type it into here, is because we're going to do it three times. So that function is used three times. So it's better, it saves a lot of space doing it that way. And a lot of complexity. Yeah, final move. Um, what can we do for the final move? I just think uh, we move people. Hmm. Well, that's a translate. And that's a positional translation. So we are going to have to use our entity position. Mm hmm. Okay. M underscore entity position. Hmm. Have we got a dot on that? No, we haven't. No. Hmm. I don't seem to have much in Vec3. I've got normalize cross dot no translation. Who's doing the translation? Who's doing the matrix? <coughs> hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to leave this line by the looks of it. I think we need to translate there. Yeah. I'm going to leave that for a second. We'll have to look through the... It depends how this code links into the avatar because the avatar's position let's see how that's been figured out and worked before we um, start messing about with that oh drinks drinks all around mm. oh that's nice and bubbly <coughs> All right, so let's do a move component. Hmm. How can we put this together? All right, I don't really have anything that I'll... Hmm, I'm not sure. Do I have anything for delta time in here? I wouldn't have thought so. All right, so... What we need is an acceleration. 
and that's what we're going to deal with in here. We've dealt with deceleration every bit and final move every bit, but we haven't times it by delta. Ah, that's got the delta in it. That's where your delta time comes in on the final move. Okay. Okie dokies. I'm happy now. Acceleration is that delta timed? It should be really. When I think about it. Doesn't have to be. Does it matter? At this point, no. All right. No, it doesn't. Not not getting the stuff done first. So we have our velocity, don't we? Let's just get back here. Uh, entity velocity. Right. M underscore N velocity again we'll take you as our prime candidate and we are going to accelerate you now to accelerate it's a plus so it's a plus equals and it will be like we tell it tell it the acceleration is And we'll have to multiply that by direction x. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fine. And we're just going to do that for each x, y, and z, aren't we? We're going to keep it that simple to start off with. This is the most simple acceleration that you can do. Okay. Personally, I would look at time as well, but for now, we'll do an x, y, and z at this, shall we? x, y. And Z, I meant Z. I can't hit the Z button. Z. <coughs> Wish my fingers would work as they are supposed to. <laughs> but there's a problem. That's an acceleration forever. And we have this thing called max velocity hanging around here that we can't go above. So what we need is a statement which says m underscore entity velocity dot x equals clamp to max velocity and that's going to be um, yeah, it's going to be the float, isn't it? Entity velocity. Very. S trying to keep this as simple as possible, really, and so it doesn't blow people's brains out. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Semicolon, and it's an error. It's another one of those gives us an error thing. So let's have you. Oh, hold on a minute. Raul, Raul Rita, hi, found a project for life. <laughs> yes, I have. Linksy Cat's here, yo dude. <laughs> you wait till tomorrow, Linksy Cat, I've got some good stuff for you. Uh, right, be right back in case you notice, I notice everything. Good to see you, Linksy. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless. So, let's uh, develop ourselves a bit here. Uh, maybe a new a thingamajiggy. Again, it's float. It's just like we did before, isn't it? It's a copy. So float, and it's a float, and what we're having here, velocities. Yeah, okay. And there we go. That's a semicolon. 
Thank you, computer. So, Linksica, what do you think of the uh, blue design here? Is it any better than the black design, do you think, for clarity? Is it clearer? Can you see it better? Yeah, I know, that's, that's what I was thinking. I mean, is it better for me? Yeah. <laughs> I can see it a bit better, actually. This is this is weird. This is really weird. I am very photosensitive. Uh, photosensitive. Um, I mean, to the extreme. I need sunglasses if somebody turns a light on in a house. Uh, I am that photosensitive. And I cope with it. Okay. But this is very bright to me. Whereas the other one was very dark and it's very noticeable to me <laughs> oh that's how you're supposed to say it is that all right um quite weird i'm finding this a bit weird because i can read things and i'm not used to that <laughs> i'm not used to being able to <laughs> read right okay so i'm hoping this might be uh, a better video for that <laughs> So, let's have a look at this. Clamp to max velocity. So, we have a max velocity, don't we? Yes, we do. We have it here. It's a float. That's good news. Oh, let's... Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, I'm thinking... It's exactly the same as what's above, but not quite. It's the same as what we've done with deceleration, isn't it? Yeah, I split it in two. If velocity is greater than naught point naught R F R We're testing max velocity. Yes, that's correct. I'm just thinking through my my uh, apologies. So what do we have to test once we get here? Um, Muppet, don't... Oh, he's coughing. He's got his fur balls going. Come on, Muppet. Cough it up, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Poor cat. Um, if it's all right because he's lying on my arm whilst I'm trying to type and doing coughing at the same time. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, that's what happens. Velocity is greater than m underscore max velocity. We are going to put uh, velocity equals max velocity yep I think that'll do again very simple stuff I'm not doing oh wow thank you Muppet you can't stay there love you're not sitting on keyboards today come on move off good boy Else, if it's less than 0 0.0f, and we just do the reverse of this. And switch it around. So that is less than minus uh, equals minus. Is that correct? I think that's correct. And of course return the velocity afterwards and we should be fine. Yeah, that looks about right. <coughs> hmm. Does that satisfy 
the definition of clamp. Yes, it does. Zero doesn't have to be clamped. Right. Good. I don't need any equal signs in there. So now we can do this clamp to max velocity. So let's do that for every um, all of them. So we'll have it there. And we'll have it there. So again, let's change that to a Y. And that to a Y. That's a Z, then that's a Z now. Let's hopefully, yeah, I can get the key. Now, now the cat's not lying on me, huh? <laughs> uh, Z, 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 Y, 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 X, 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 Done. That's it. That's roughly everything. Except for the final move, which we've got to work out. I think we've got everything there and in place that we would need for functionality. All we have to do now is integrate that into an entity. No, constructor. Hmm, let's have a look at this constructor again. Okay. Mm, that's not the correct way of doing it. That's the correct way of doing it. Um, <laughs> a frowny, frowny face, or a sad face if you do it the other way. Yeah, right. Great. <laughs> it's an emote. <laughs> I'm starting to put emotes into me code. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear me, I think I'm all right with that. Yeah. Right, I think I'm all right with this movement component. I don't think it's doing what I want it to do. Yeah, it looks okay. Ah, welcome back, Rita. A, a wonderfully Arari name. Nice one. Uh, let's think now. We need to integrate this into our movement. First of all, we need to know what our movement currently looks like. So, currently. Um, yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, very fast. Whoa. Look around here. Yeah. Our movement's quite good. It's not as bad as it could be. Yeah, alright, so that's working. The escape key's working. Good. Everything's working. Well, let's break it. That's usually how it goes with me. We have placed this movement component under components. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> How am I going to do this? We're going to have to go through the entities, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Entities are only created, but entities are going to be created for statics as long as well as uh, non statics. Or can we just use models and positions for that? Hmm. Hmm. Choices, choices. I can choose to do it quite a few different ways, so I think we're going to go with entity. Um, and we'll we'll start encoding it through entity itself. And that 
is in here. So let's just pop up our base entity here. Okay, it's got system includes. Um, and that will be dot dot slash components moving component. So that puts that there. Hmm. Yeah, what we'll do still inside Amber namespace, that's good news. So don't have to mess about too much. Hmm. Let's just pop it at the end there. Uh, movement component. <laughs> because we now have that. And I'm going to... Oh, let's start. Um, guess what I'm going to call it? Uh, movement component. Cause it's, that's what it is. So we're going to need a new one of those. I'm not liking this because I'm specifying this only for the avatar now. I'm not using a generic approach. But for now, it will work. Or we can integrate it first and then refactor later, yes. Integrate and work first. Lovely idea. I like these kind of things. <laughs> this is actually the hardest part of programming. You have a system of that works and then you've got to break it to make it work again. Um, I'm not sure I like this. I mean, all we've got in here is update and render. Um, it's where I'm putting it, Ralrita. Um, the problem that I'm having in my own mind is where do I place that line in my code? Movement component. That I've just been writing. Um, I can place it into the base entity, or I can place it directly into the avatar. Which one would make more sense? The avatar is is part of. Sorry, the avatar inherits base entity. Yeah, I'll have to go through a constructor. Let's put it through this one. Let's let's not worry about it too much, I think, at the end of the day. Um, I'm just going to start adding stuff in here and see what I think. Let's see, what would I need to make this work? Um, well, let's start with the obvious. Uh, create. Uh, move meant component in case you don't want to create it I suppose now to create the, that we're going to need um, I'll go downwards again const hmm max velocity yeah, we'll need that. Uh, float. Yes, float. There we go. We'll need a const. Float. Acceleration. And a comp. 
so I've got it that here. Const, obviously, now float deceleration. Mm, I think that's going to be it. I'll go with that. Uh, where are we? Base entity. Here we go. Yeah, this has got a lot in it, you can tell. Great. Well, let's start filling it up. It doesn't do much at the moment, so yeah, may as well add it here. Okay, uh, let's create that one then. Uh, no thanks, I'll look at it in a minute. Hmm. And I'll have you coming downwards so I can see it. So I'll design this in the same way as I did before. Don't know. Okay. That might not stay empty this time. Okie dokie, so let's see what we can do with this. What else can we do? <coughs> or oh, what will we want to be able to do with our avatar? Um, Right, I'll want some virtual voids. Are these equal to zero? Yeah, those are totally virtual. So I want to keep these separate. I can still put overrides against them then. Uh, virtual void. Hmm, set position. Not everything's just going to need that. Yeah. Um, we're going to have const float um, x. Why not? Const float y. And const float z to set position. That'll do. I'm not going to put it equal to zero. <coughs> I could. No. Because then you don't have to do it. Right, that sounds better to me. Uh, so we can set the position. Let's just pop that in as well. create definition of that. You see how it doesn't come up with a silly thingy, but anyway, it's there. Uh, want to be able to move as well, I guess. So virtual void uh, move. And that's going to become a thing now. And that's going to be const uh, yeah, that's how I know. That's how I did it before. Float and its direction this time, instead of just position x y z. I want a direction x y z. Well, yeah, x comma const float direction. X, Y, comma, const, float, direction. I mean, problem here is I could inf start inflating the code <coughs> unnecessarily, which is why I'm using virtuals, if you're wondering. Um, I'm picking to use virtuals so that it may not be used. It's You get a choice. I'm going to add a const, float, and delta time to that. Be 
because you need time to be able to move. Okay. Semicolon. Okay, you come up, you're green. There we go. We've got everything I need now, I think. Well, basics of everything I might need. Everything that I do in here it affects our avatar. So bear that in mind. It's always wise to bear in mind that you're about to affect your own avatar. Yes. Uh, ouch. Thank you, Muppet. Careful of... Very sharp claws. It's okay. You're only hurting me. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Alright, we do have to change one thing here. That's this. Um, we are going to have to specify now that we have this thing here. We've now got a pointer. Um, so M underscore movement component. I'm just going to set it to a null pointer because people might not want one. Um, that doesn't affect anything else there, but it does here. Because we now have to delete it. Yeah, we have to delete it indeed. Eh? <sighs> and there is something I have forgotten. I'm damn sure about it. Um, entity position, entity position. Do I believe in reincarnation? Mm, no, I'm Shinto. <laughs> oh, Ralph Rita, you are so right. This will take me more than a lifetime to complete. <coughs> yes, this is video 40. Uh, I was going to be doing um, terrain today, but uh, I, I, I was in, had to go to the hospital on Monday. So we, we, we didn't have that video. That video didn't come today. This is where we were up to, so I've just continued instead. Uh, this was supposed to be Monday. Uh, let's see now. Oh yeah, absolutely no problem with me, don't worry. Um, my, my, <laughs> my, my bits are nearly <laughs> integrated to my body. <laughs> uh, no, I am disabled, but that's a different story and it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Uh, I'm a, I'm a happy person. I'm not a sad one, which is good. <laughs> That's why I do this. Um, I've forgotten something and I can't see it. It's that. We have to integrate that as well. Mm, where does that come in? Right, I think this comes into this movement thing. Mm. We'll see, because I'll find out that something's missing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to my base entity and let's get these tied. Let's start filling some of these in. Uh, oh, he's still complaining, damn it. Oh, right. <coughs> you can't tell that I've just initialized it. Okay, that's fine. It sometimes takes these a long time to go away, these green squigglies. No idea. Ah, oh, there it goes, it's gone. Right, we're okay to continue. 
Excellent. That's what I was waiting for. Um, let's create the component. That's going to be the easiest, isn't it? That's this one here. So M movement component. Let's do this one first. M underscore movement. This is, this is where we're adding it to the entity, our movement component. This is how we are going to tie it in. Uh, so let's get you and we will equal a new a new mm -hmm. it's not going to fit on one line is it a new <coughs> movement component open brackets alright so what do we need we need whatever it says on the screen. Amber Vec3 Entity Position. I thought so. That's the thing we're missing. No, we have it. Position. Seriously? I haven't even put an M on any of this. Okay. This is going to cause me confusion. All of this lot. What have I done? That was from a structure, a separate structure for something else. <coughs> okay. I've got two design choices here. This code has to be modified, and that is a mess. So we're going to clean the code whilst we're here. This will break it even more. Oh my god, we should have cleaned the code first. Uh, no, we won't clean the code then. What we'll do is we'll get it working, then clean the code. Um, Clean this code, use m underscore for member, there we go, so we'll come back to that hopefully, uh, this is base entity, base entity, does this does Visual Studio recognize to do? I think it does. I hope it does. Otherwise, I'm going to have problems with that, aren't I? Oh, it has. It's put a plus. It's recognized it. Good. Oh, see you, Ral Rita. Take care. Uh, let's get back to that. So we do have position. That's interesting. I thought I'd forgotten something. Um, let's get back to this. We now need max velocity. We got that. Uh, we now need acceleration. Um, and deceleration. So there we go. There we are. We got it. And go to the end and do a semicolon. And we should be okay with that. That's really all there is to it. Hmm. So that will now create a movement component inside our entity. Hmm. Let's have a look at set position. Right. All this will do is uh, position uh, dot x will equal x. This is a setter. Okay. 
doesn't matter, I'm doing your longhand position. Dot y equals y. And position. I'm going to need this actually, so I'm glad I'm putting it in now. Equals z. Um, that's that really, I guess. But it's the model position that's being... Yeah, we'll be fine with that. We haven't got set rotation yet. We should have, really. Hmm. Okay. Oh, let's have a look at move. Mm, there is something I'm going to have to do, though. I'm going to have to take these zeros off. get some uh, something in for those as well. I think we're going to need them. <laughs> oh well. So now we've got more to do. Mm. Okay, so move. Movement again should be straight forward. We first of all check if there's a movement component. If there is one available, we are going to do n underscore movement component, and it's a pointer, and we are going to say move, and then it's just direction. X, yeah, it tells us what to put in, doesn't it? Direction. <laughs> I love this programming way. It tells me what to do. So I, c I can't go wrong according to that. X. Uh, direction. X. Yep. Yeah, okay. Why is that wrong? Okay. I'll figure this out in a minute. Direction. X. Y. Have I spelt something wrong? Yeah. That's usually the reason for my misgivings in this uh, thing. There we go. That's everything it needs, is it? It's happy now. Mm, it takes delta time as well, doesn't it? Yeah. I would have known that if I had bothered to do... Yeah, silly me. Okay, we can come out of that now. If I had actually bothered... ...to do that, I would have known what it took. And same here with set position. It becomes more obvious. Um, yeah. Keep it all neat. There we go. So that's that done. Update. Hmm. It's going to rely on that again. And that's just going to be M underscore movement component update delta time. I see all of that on the screen, that's good. 
Um, render. I'm not going to complain. Render entity at its position is the answer to that one. I think we're already doing that. And complete bad typing as usual. Excellent. It's all right, my cat sat the other way around this time, not lying on my arm. No excuse there. Right, I've got that far. So I've integrated into base entity something called a movement component. And we can now create that movement component using uh, and use it using this create movement component thingy here. So once we've created it, it opens up uh, both move, that then does something and update then does something. So it opens up two new areas. And I think that should do for now. Okay, let's go and have a look at our program and see if it's crying by now. We might need translate on vector 3D, lovely. Okay, so we're still on movement component. We've done that one, which will now affect this one. So let's put this one up and see what I've done. Um, whoops, no, just switch over, please. Thank you. Okay, this is the base, this is the avatar, which inherits our base entity here, all that typing that we've just been doing. So we don't need to include anything extra. That's a good start. <laughs> That's always a good start. Um, let's have a look and see what we need here. <laughs> hmm. Right, I've got move. Up, I've got move all over the place here. Hmm. All right, Muppet. Muppet. Right. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're introducing our avatar to a whole different movement system. And that's going to get complicated, isn't it? Very, very quickly. Um. Yikes. Our movement, our actual position, is going to end up inside a component. Okay. Let's see how we're using this so far. We're using this for the projection matrix because it's our camera. That's good news. Uh, in our update, we do all of this. Uh, I think we can just probably cut this out. I need to see the other one as well, don't I now? I now need three files open, not just two. Oh my god. Uh, And this is giving me, if mouse button pressed, screen position, mouse update, x, y. This is a two-dimensional 
rotational where movement isn't that's a three dimensional non rotational right now hmm update mouse okay I think I'm gonna have to go through this more carefully oh stretch me back <coughs> lovely Um, gonna really depend on our game state, I guess. Because what we are currently doing, let's have a look at our game state. Alright, so when we're in the game, we are, or should be looking, at the keyboard here. Um, and we are giving these out. What we can do... is turn those into directions in a delta time. Yeah. And where will that be? Don't think it really comes in here. And that will get rid of all of that lot. We have to rewrite this. It's not going to come through Avatar. No, it's going to come through Base Entity. There. That's what we need to be giving for this to work, we are going to need to strip Avatar out completely. All the movement that we're doing in here, we can get rid of. But at the end of it, we still need to know our position. How do we get our position? When we render we send our entity into the warehouse for rendering. Okay, that takes care of that, which means our entity must be up to date by the end of these inputs. Yeah, so these have to change. Uh, strafe left is no longer the thing we want to do. The thing we want to do, um, instead of strafe left, is move. Um, we want to move in direction for the left is minus one. Uh, the direction for y is zero. The direction for Z is zero. And the delta time is, of course, delta time. And that's it. That's what I'm thinking. That will go straight through to here, move here, which will then in turn send it on to the movement in our, well, component into here. And it will end up giving us a direction movement here as an acceleration. 
I saw work. And it's going to make our avatar a hell of a lot simpler. Okay. You. Um, delete, I guess. Oh, well, there they went. Avatar.cpp. Well, this goes red. Oops, let's just get rid of you. And we'll get rid of the redness. And um, that's okay. Move still exists, because it's in uh, Entity. So back here, this is absolutely fine, but all of these got red now. So what I'm looking for is move to delta time. Can I just have you as well? And on this one, we want to strafe right, which is x is a plus one. Like that. Um, to move forward, That's going to be damned interesting. It took me ages to get it right. Oh well. Bye bye. We are going to use Z at plus one. Yes, I am using SFML. Yes, totally. Um, it's the only one that I've found that actually works. To be honest with you, all the rest I found holes in. Um, if you watch from the beginning, I, st I think I started off with, um, yeah, no, yeah, it's all right. It's very, very, very uh, well used out of out and around. Um, I think that's minus one. I hope I'm right on this. Um, I started off with some other one, then went on to GLFW, and then ended up on SFML. So yeah, it's been through various processes, this. <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't think this is going to work. I really don't think this is going to work. <sighs> we'll try. We can but try. There we So that's the movements done. Can't actually see the full thing, but there you go. I apologise for that. I should have said there's about another half screen to add to that. Um, the SF keyboard thing. There's tons of it. It just makes it look awkward. Which is why I haven't put it going downwards, because it's just awkward. <laughs> um... Update mouse position. Update mouse position. Prepare models. Hmm. I'm grumbling at this because I don't like it. I don't like it for good reasons, really. But. Alright, where's our update? What are we doing? What are we doing? This is update input. Here's our update. Alright, reset input. That was only for the other idea. We had to reset. Oh, I'll leave it in, see what it does. Um, we update the input, and then M avatar update. That stays the same. That should update our position. Got it now. Of course, it's not in here. Hmm. This is a problem with C++. What we now have is a controller. 
controlling across three classes. So when you're integrating, it gets a bit tricky. For rendering, you should just be calling the renderer. Render batch. That's correct. Render M state window. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave that. One. That's a target. Okay. I'm just wondering why this is not surrounded by OpenGL. <coughs> That's because it is OpenGL, so it doesn't need to be surrounded. Right, okay, got it. This all should work. I think it's awful to say, but this should work by itself. It shouldn't need any more incorporation from here. Just a change of those values up on the movement. What am I going to get for that? I'm only going to get two-dimensional movement. Hmm. I'm going to get two-dimensional movement within 3D, because look, zero, zero, zero. So this is only two-dimensional movement. There is no Y factor. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit of a joke, isn't it? We've got the X factor, but we've got no Y factor. Oh, well. A game state this looks fine. Avatar doesn't need all of that stuff anymore. Yeah, we're doing less and less in here, aren't we? Hmm. I'm going to lose this completely, aren't I? For the... Oh, no, the update will still work. We're still calling it. And we still have now a base entity update. Oh, no. All right. There's no conflict there. Uh, I don't know whether to put an override in or not. Hmm. All right. Okay. Succeeds. Hmm. Target is non reference formal parameter in base entity dot CPP. Yes, it will be on line sixty seven. Right, how do we get past that? Rendering's got nothing to do with this at the moment. I'm just checking. See whether it needs targets or anything. Um, that's okay then. 
So I don't think there's any build problems. I just think there's a ton of logic problems. And the biggest one I've got is that speed, that position. It's knowing where the entity is. The entity might never move because we're not really updating it, I don't think. That should happen. Hmm. Who gives me the answer? Direction and magnitude. That doesn't give me a point in space. Movement, direction, blah, 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 blah. That, the velocity is calculated. The velocity needs to be applied. Here. Okay. Uh, so your position equals <laughs> it's velocity times delta time. Okay. And that is a VEC3 times float. So delta move, which is a full VEC3. Equals then whatever the velocity is, the m entity velocity times delta time. Just about fits on the line. Just. <coughs> hmm. Entity position plus equals delta move. I think that's the final. I'm just wondering why I've typed to get velocity and when we need the position. <laughs> <laughs> oh grief blades 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 this velocity doesn't we don't care about that ah uh, okay Let's have get position instead. That might help us out more. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So if the base entity updates a position every time, we might have a chance. Okay. I'm just wondering whether to do it here on the update or here on the move. Move is interactive, update isn't. Do we need to update our position every tick? Well, when we go through, <coughs> we are doing, aren't we? Update delta time. Yeah, update, we're getting our final move each time. So after doing that, why doesn't this just return it? Why have I got a void? This is why I'd never have getters and setters, isn't it? <laughs> because I start asking myself stupid questions. Like, why? I don't know. Update isn't a void at all. Feed in a delta time and we get out um, <coughs> an entity position of X3. And that's the whole point of it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yep. So let's return m underscore enter t position. Fantastic. I uh, would we'll give that a gap. I would also no. I would also get rid of that line there. Let's just clean up a little bit. <sighs> I'll come back to that line because that's not true. I just want the function to be able to do something. Alright, so our VEC3 update should now go through to avatar. Here. Yeah. There should be a red squiggly in here somewhere. Where? Oh no, it won't show up as a red squiggly, will it? Update, update, update. Here it is. Update mouse. Okay, that's doing that. That's fine. Update mouse. Okay, that's fine. It goes in here. That's fine. And that is position equals. Yeah. Hmm. Now you know why these are so bad. It should be M position equals. But our entity's position has now changed. Or can change. From the update. That's what I wanted to see.
Okay. Hmm. I thought I sorted that out. Oh, now it's in movement component on 44. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if delta a line that does nothing delta time is greater than uh, one point zero f. STD, come on, come on, C out, uh, delta time. It's there for a reason, but nothing that anybody wants to worry about. And I don't care if it's seen or not, so. Alrighty, I'll do. I'll stop that. Oh god, what have I just done? Control B. There we go. Lovely. Can I make this bigger? Control mouse wheel. Nothing happens. Control Alt mouse wheel. Nothing happens. How do you make that bigger? I don't know. Oh, well. Can hardly see it. Never mind. Um. Hmm. What's that gonna do? Oh. It's going to make everything an absolute nightmare. Is what that's gonna do. So I've typed in all of this code. I think it's rubbish, but we've got our Microsoft buttons. Well, let's see. They're all Microsofty. They're nice. Microsoft says they look nice, and that's the best kind of button that they can make. So that's what they do with their windows. Here's our guy, and we have our mouse movement for rotation. Okay, very fast rotation there. Uh, but there's nothing on these. There's nothing happening on the keyboard at all, which I expected totally. Fantastic. Well, let's follow the logic. Let's do a logic test. Uh, that one there, thank you. Alright, so we're in game state. And we press move right this one here so that's D on the keyboard we press a D it's gonna say M avatar move we haven't created ah whoops my bad so I went to all that trouble to you to write a component, and we haven't even created one, have we? <laughs> uh, base entity, base entity. Did I put if it exists, you'll use it? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, so sometime upon a time, we need an initializer. I'm a muppet. Who's going to initialize this? <laughs> I love programming. <laughs> I really do. Oh, are you going to do it, Avatar? You're supposed to. Avatar. Yeah. We don't want it in the base entity, even though we make it available in the base entity. 
We want to make it an actual thing for the avatar. <sighs> I am a complete and utter Muppet. So, when we make an avatar, we have some choices to make. And one of the choices that we're going to make is initializing of components. Because we're going to have components that we can have. So let's have one of those. Let's have a void. And it's nothing special. So init uh, components. My spelling is bad for that, but never mind. That'll do. Doesn't have to take anything. Uh, that'll give us a green squiggly. Oh, yes, that's better. Lovely. And in init components, we are going to put create, because it's part of our own stuff, movement component. And then we're going to give it some interesting things like um, max velocity. Three. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a float? Yeah. Um, acceleration. Mm. About point three then. Not point three F. I'm guessing. I'm hoping these work. Uh, deceleration. Mm, about half, I would think. So, not point one five, which actually is quite fast. F. For the scale that I'm using. And is that all it needed? Yeah, I guess so. It doesn't seem to be complaining too much. So there we go. We're going to create our movement component with those those variables. Um, they're just hard-coded in at the moment. But um, So because they're hard-coded, I have to type in comments. Jesus. Uh, acceleration. And deceleration. Lovely. Fantastic. So we've got that. Um, so that can init our component. Hmm. There is something else here that I'm very, very interested in. I'm going to have init components. Hello there, Acre Run. Thank you. My heart goes out to you. That's very kind of you. You've uh, put a follow up for me. Thank you. Or subscribe or something. That's very kind. Hmm. Hmm. That's init components. So in our avatar, here we go. Worked it. That has to come in through the uh, avatar. Blah 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 does all of this. Da da da. Blah blah blah. M yeah. Blah blah blah. Update mouse. Okay. So after update mouse, we'll have init components. Okay. We'll pop that one in. Anything else we might need in our avatar? We could actually da start setting position. Uh, set position might be a very useful one now. Uh, 
I'm starting to think that that might be the case. That we can start our avatar at any position. I'll leave that for a second. We'll keep it at well, everything at zero and defaults for testing. And then we'll do that, I think. Now what's going to happen? Now we have access to that code. <laughs> Okay, we're looking good. Well, let's pop ourselves up here. Uh, we've got our... Oh, nothing's happening. Yeah, that still works. I can't go forwards or backwards. Alrighty, that's fine. Thought that might be it, but it isn't. So we're now initting our components. Did I ask for a rebuild there? No, I didn't. Uh, build. Rebuild sandbox. I haven't done this in a while. Let's get rid of everything and put a new sandbox together. Got a model of warehouse. There it is, movement component. Yeah, it's in there. Good. Just do a quick run. There is movement. Hold on a minute. That was interesting. Just one second. I think there is movement. Maybe it's my scaling. That's very probable. Okay, let's times this up a minute. Let's have 100. That would probably put that to 20, we'll say. And we'll have you at 10. Let's try bigger numbers. Sometimes that's usually the problem, is that you're thinking in the wrong scale. I feel as though I can see something happening, but I'm not sure. Okay. I didn't put a construction notification in. It's okay. Should have done. Oh. It, <laughs> it is interesting uh, that, yes, it's connecting. What is it doing what I'm expecting it to do? I don't think it really is. I'm not sure I want this. And there's a reason for it. I think the other system is better because the avatar is the one controllable by the keyboard. What else would you control? Yeah, vehicles, vehicles, vehicles. You would then go into a different game state, wouldn't you? Or would you? But you might have different key bindings. But you'd still be... in the same system area. So this movement component, although I think it's worth it, I think I might be approaching it the wrong way for the wrong idea. 
And this is this is part of research and development. Testing something out. I mean, I can make this work, but is this really the component I want? Because by making it work, I'm going to have to change it in such a way that every entity has to have a movement component that they don't switch on because it's keyboard based. What I have to do is keep the keyboard on one side and keep the movement components on the other. Um, I think that's what this is trying to do. But, well that's the way I've designed it anyway. With that in mind. But I'm not sure it's actually doing it because everything in here is correct. And I know it's correct. Absolutely 100% correct. This is, by the way, the movement component that I would normally use. If I was to design it, this is how I would design my movement component. Not sure how I would do that final move there. Because that's a big difference. Um, because really what we're doing here is setting the position of whatever entity we're in. So you're really just returning entity. Now, using this movement component on anything else except for the avatar might work quite nicely. But it doesn't control, you don't get to control the rotation on it properly. We need to put rotation in here and everything. Because at the moment the mouse, obviously if I, the mouse part's working because we haven't touched it, it's done on purpose. But if I was to swap the mouse into this, that would then stop working as well. So I'm not wholly sold on this idea at the moment. So there we go. I'm not going to give a correction for that at the moment. Uh, what I will do though, is I will go back to our sandbox. Um, hmm. Alright, okay, that's alright then. And I'll probably revert those files that I've done. I'm not happy with them. I'm happy with movement component, but I'm not happy with the way I'm introducing it into the entity. Through base entity. Well, that's the place where you've got to do it now. Hmm. How interesting. Hmm. Why is I've got no ups and downsies? Ah, because I'm not both open. Thank you. Um not sure how I think I might struggle on with this. But it also gives me a chance to uh, do what I wanted to do today. <laughs> so we are into questions and answers time. Anything that you want to know about. Um, I'm going to give this further th further thought, obviously, offline. But I might not give it too much more thought. Because what I really want to be getting on to this week is setting the scene. Um, our scene really isn't fantastic, is it? Uh, let's have a look at it, shall we? even though it's in a, in a station. And that's our scene currently. Uh, that's the zero, 0 plane straight across the middle. And that's the zero, 0 plane straight across the middle that way for the Y. So X is zeroed, Y is zeroed. I've just put him off to one side and left him at zero. Um, so he's happy. What we need, one is to bring that zero zero down a bit. That's easy enough. You raise the camera up a bit. So where we have our avatar, blah de blah de blah. This is where I want to be able to set position. 
So that was the one thing that I want. That's what I kept thinking about all the way through. This was when am I going to set the position? Um, and with the uh, we'll have to do it with the avatar because it affects the camera totally, but it doesn't affect. Right? Yeah. What I would do here is I would init the components and then I would set position. Oh, we got it. Yeah, we have. There it is. There we go. So the position that I want to set it to is one meter to the right. I want to set it uh hmm I'm gonna say point eight eighty centimeters that's not a long way um, I'll give it the full one meter then one meter up in the air and I'm going to keep it at zero in the Z direction for now, for, for obvious reasons uh, that come up in a minute. So if I run it now, it should be more centralized, I'm hoping. Oh, we've got our set position wrong. And that's why the guy was off center. Uh, nope, he hasn't moved at all. Never mind. Yeah, so it's not working at all properly, this. I don't like it. Um, base entity. You see, even set position isn't working properly. It's not giving our positions back properly. Should do on that one. Hmm. That's interesting. Base entity holds our position. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today because um, I'm spotting too much that's wrong um, and tilted in my mind. So I'm going to just run through this after a break. I'm going to use, obviously, the good old red dot. <laughs> and I'll run a three, few traces through the program and I'll see what it's up to. Okay, so I will catch you on Friday, 2 p.m. with... Um, hopefully not this, but something more akin to, well, how can you put it? Let, let's get this terrain thingy started, shall we? I'm not really wanting to get this movement swapped around and changed too much, but we may do. So I will catch on Friday and we will find out. Uh, that's at two o'clock. Uh, tomorrow at two o'clock I am doing uh, Blades' world, my world. And I'm going to show you behind the scenes how I go about things and what I actually do as a research and developer. Okay, I've cleared it all with the boss, so we're okay. I'll start from there, go there and code and do things and have fun. Alright, take care, have fun. <laughs>